let me ask you first off uh, what you make of the market reaction to your earnings. The shares are down almost four and a half percent. Well, we delivered a solid 4% growth uh, for the first six uh, months of 2018. I think we disappointed a bit on the top line, but that is explained by some uh, some rebate adjustments in, in the U.S. in relation to Victosa sales. So I'm quite confident with our performance for the first half year. And uh, what is most important for me is that I actually see market share gains in the U.S. and we're turning around our GP1 performance with the launch of Ozempic off to a very strong start, taking 15% of new scripts. And then I will also mention that our business outside of the U.S. is growing a very strong 8% this first half year. So I'm quite encouraged by our commercial performance uh, and what that can bring going forward. How do you see the pricing situation in the U.S. developing? I mean, we just had fresh comments from U.S. President Donald Trump about uh, drug prices that he wants to see come down. You're already dealing with this issue. Um, do you see it uh, changing for the better or worse going forward? How does it affect your business? I think we made a point out of communicating in our half year release that uh, based on the contracting that's uh, being discussed now for 19, we see a continued price pressure in pr primarily the basal category and also the impact from the changed uh, Medicare coverage gap lit litigation in the US. But this is exactly the same comment we made one year ago. So what is important for us is that we have maintained broad access uh, so we can go out and uh, promote our, our new innovation. Uh, reality is that in the instrument category, pricing is coming down, both for Nord Norsk and our competitors. So I, I do understand that drug pricing is a key issue for the president. I have a lot of sympathy for that, because there are patients who are not getting access to, to the rebates that, that we give. But I think in particular in the instrument segment, we have a case where pricing is actually coming down, and that, that is something we've been talking about for a couple of years now. Well, and it's also uh, an area in which, I mean, Novo Nordisk, clearly has the most innovative diabetes drugs. When you look at Traceba, for example, um, and the semaglutide franchise, how confident are you in being able to pass on that success in terms of pricing? I'm quite confident that we can keep uh, very strong growth in the GLP-1 space. And uh, right now we don't see that as a, as a big uh, price uh, issue. Uh, so, so we're looking for volumes and uh, we, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we took 15% uh, of new scripts uh, in the first half of, uh, of 2018 uh, and, uh, and, and with Ozempic. And when you launch a new product and you can actually take 15% uh, of new scripts uh, by end of June, I think that's a very, very strong uh, launch. So I see a market that's open for innovation and there's a willingness to switch patients to, to better products. We also grew to receive market share by 2% in the U.S., uh, sorry, 3% in the U.S. And if you look outside of the U.S., we had double-digit growth of Traceba. So I see a, a demand for better uh, products that can bring uh, better care for, for patients. Uh, so we are driving uh, those products, uh, and I think we are executing quite well commercially uh, right now. Uh, let me ask you also what your view is on the M&A landscape, Lars. You've had... Um, we're in a situation where, A, there's so much cash out there, especially on the, the PE side, and B, a lot of drug makers are feeling the pinch of a squeeze in, in U.S. pricing. How do you see M&A panning out this, this year and next? We're primarily looking for M&A in our biofarm business, where we like to bowl on some growth, and we believe we have a strong infrastructure to do that. But I agree with you, there's a lot of cash, and there are some high, high price points. So it's not, it's not easy to do M&A in this environment, but we, uh, we keep looking at it, and we have some, some leads that, we, uh, that we're working on. Uh, but we've also historically communicated that we'll stay prudent on, on valuations, uh, because we need to to drive growth for our shareholders, but we also need to generate a return when we go out and do M&A.